Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to teach you how to make a semi-homemade chicken, quote-unquote, carbonara. It's really a knockoff. We're going to use this Campbell's Skillet Creamy Parmesan Chicken Sauce, and we're going to doctor it up. I'm going to use some Barilla whole wheat pasta, because after all, or whole grain pasta, because after all, that's what I need to eat. We're going to use some bacon. Now, the choice is yours. I end up using six slices for three people, or four portions, and chicken tenders. And again, this is your choice, but the recipe calls for a pound of chicken tenders, but I like a little meatier. That's what I use. And I'm also going to use some of this minced garlic. This one is from Aldi. I like it in water. That's my preference. <laughs> Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to cut up the six strips of bacon. So now if you've never cut bacon, and I know this is going to sound like, okay, but if you've never cut bacon, you really want to make sure that your bacon is cold and that your knife is sharp. Um, and trust me, if you've cut bacon and it hasn't gone right for you, these are just some things that might help it go better next time. You want your knife to be sharp and your bacon to be cold. And if you have a problem where your bacon is sort of tearing and pulling or sliding around, just throw your bacon in the freezer just for a minute or two, if you can afford to, and then cut it once it's nice and cold. Um, and also make sure your knife is super sharp and it'll cut through that bacon like butter, like bacon. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm just cutting like about half inch strips and then I'm cutting the chunks into thirds in the other direction while Jim vacuum seals the bacon back up again. <laughs> now, I like to brown my bacon in a cold pan. Um, the reason I do that is because it renders off more fat that way. So I don't have my pan on yet. But you wanna make sure that you have a pan big enough to cook everything in. All right, so I'm taking it over to the big frying pan that I will be able to brown the chicken in and then add the sauce and cook the sauce down. Um, and like I said, this is a cold pan. We're going to go ahead and put the pan on high once we've put the bacon in. Now, for those of you who are new to my channel, hi. <laughs> but um, for those of you who have been around a while, you know that when I buy my big package of family-sized chicken breasts, I separate the tenders and I cut the tenders and I freeze them already cut. This is a super easy shortcut for making this. This is going to be less than a 30 minute meal because it's actually going to cook just in the length it takes to boil the pasta. Okay? The chicken and the bacon is basically just as long as it's going to take to cook the pasta. So, like I said, we're just going to brown this bacon um, in a low, not in a low, in on high heat, but we're going to start it cold okay I said that already yeah okay and I'm sorry for all the background noises but I know lots of people like the sizzles and the little chipmunk voices <laughs> but I only have doubled the speed on this because you're not really supposed to do 30 minute videos even though I do get away with it once in a while but nobody wants to sit here and watch this cook in real time so um, this video is about 11 minutes long uh, before all of the extra stuff so this is like a 28 minute meal Okay, um, let's see. What I am getting ready is a plate with a paper towel on it. And I'm using a slotted spoon to mix this around because I'm going to scoop this out and put it on the side. Now, Mom likes her bacon crispy in her um, quote-unquote carbonara. <laughs> but, um, so we're going to cook it crispy. But if you prefer like a chewier bacon consistency then obviously you cook it to what you like it the other option is to, when you add the bacon she just likes it sprinkled on top when the whole meal is done but you can always add it to the sauce and the chicken when you're cooking that down too if you prefer that as well um the other thing is um i'm i, I have carbonara in quotes because carbonara is really with a raw egg and um, Parmesan cheese. Like if you really wanted to make carbonara, it isn't that difficult. It's just that some people are sort of like, it's the heat of the pasta that cooks the egg. Um, so some, not everybody is crazy about doing it that way. So um, this is something that she likes to order when she's out in restaurants. And when she orders it in restaurants, it really is Alfredo with bacon. So, um, or pancetta sometimes, you know, carbonara should normally have pancetta which is the Italian bacon, non-cured, I believe, pancetta is. But anyway, um, 
you know, that's why it's got it in quotes, because it's not exactly that. And um, it's not even Alfredo because this chicken parmesan sauce from um, Campbell Skillet. Again, not a sponsored vlog. <laughs> but it's just a shortcut um, than making homemade um, sauce with having to have cream and butter and parmesan cheese. Um, this just makes it a little easier. And this was what makes it 30 minutes. Now, I could probably teach you guys how to make a homemade Alfredo. It's just it's a tricky sauce that, you know, you have to make sure it doesn't break. Um, so it's just for a little bit more of an advanced cook. Now, um, I'm leaving the bacon grease in there because I'm going to cook my chicken in it. But if you have too much bacon grease, if your grease, if your chicken's letting off too much fat or if you're trying to be health conscious, you can go ahead and pour most of that off. But I'm just going to go ahead and cook my chicken in there. And like I said, I have pre-cut these bacon, this chicken chunks, excuse me, when I, when I prep my chicken for the freezer. And then any of them that are too big or stuck together, you can just break them up in there. Now, um, mom likes them either completely bite-sized or that big enough that she can cut it with a knife. So I'm just going to leave these ones big so that she can actually serve big pieces and she can cut them up with her knife as she wants. All right. And this is one of her favorite things that she likes for me to cook. And you know that she has um, a particular taste and this Campbell's... Um, Parmesan chicken skillet was one that she really enjoys. So we went ahead and do that. So the, um, the instructions say to brown the chicken just for a few minutes on each side. But I'm just going to cook them a tiny bit longer. And then I'm turning each one of them as they get brown on the other side just for flavor. You know, it's just really just to add for flavor. Plus I'm waiting for my water to boil. <laughs> um... Once we have the chicken brown on both sides, then we're going to add the garlic. And that's just another one of those little touches. So if you don't have somebody with a particular taste, um, I would love to add some oregano to this. Or possibly some fresh basil. Or I personally would probably like some grilled onion with my chicken alfredo. But that's just me. And when I order this in a restaurant, I get broccoli with it. I get um, chicken, broccoli, bacon. And that's how I like it um, when I order it in a restaurant. So here we're going to make a hole in the middle of the pan. And we're going to put in one heaping teaspoon of garlic, which is about a clove, clove and a half, two cloves. It depends on how big your cloves were. And I'm just going to cook that for a shortest period of time. Did you see that? And then the sauce is going to go in. Now it's going to continue to cook the garlic. And when you get the jarred garlic, it does cook a lot faster than the fresh garlic. Um, but I make sure I get every last ounce out of this. Um, particular package. You get to squeeze it really nice. When I do it with jar sauce, like the Prego um, rag ragu roasted garlic, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> so sorry, then I go ahead and I add a little water to the jar and shake it out and that kind of thing. But this one doesn't require that. And then you cover it and you basically let it cook. Um, I'm going to let it cook till my pasta is done. The instructions are, remember, you just brown the chicken, a little, cook a chicken a little bit, two minutes on each side. And then you add the sauce and you cook it down for ten minutes. But um, my stove does cook really high. And if I left this for ten minutes, I'd be scraping the sauce off the bottom. <laughs> even, on, even on low heat. Um, oh, reduce it to low. Did I tell you to do that? <laughs> Sometimes I think my head wasn't attached. Um, so we're just going to cook this down. And now basically, like I said, we're just waiting for the pasta. Um, the pot of water went on the same time as I was cooking the bacon. This particular linguine, linguine, I beg your pardon, um, is like a 7 to 11 minute. If you've never had Barilla pasta, it is always done al dente. Like always, you feel like you can't overcook it. But for, for us, most of the time, it's actually like waiting for it to get done. So um, so that's what we're doing here. So, um, again, there is very variations on this recipe um, besides just pasta. Besides just pasta. Yes, besides just pasta. This would be great over rice. Um, Add rice to it. Take one of those 90 second bags of brown rice and add it right to the sauce and that would make a great delicious dish. This would probably also be really good as a casserole. Um, you know a lot of the Campbell soups you can use as casserole 
um, sauces, but I think that this would make a great one as well because it's absolutely delicious. So this is another one of those cooking 101 deals. Um, you know, you take the sink stopper out of the sink, make sure your sink is clean because when you put the colander in there, the water could come back up and if, get into your food. So make sure your sink is cleaned out. Um, and then I drain the pasta and just add it right to the sauce. And I'm going to finish cooking the sauce and coating the pasta. This is an option. You can always serve the sauce on top of the pasta, but everybody here likes it this way. All right, and then we're going to put it in its serving dish because it takes just about all that time. Remember, this is two times speed, so if you saw me stir it for two minutes, that means I stirred it for, I mean, if you saw me stir it for a minute, that means I really stirred it for two minutes. But then I just take my rubber spoonula, as always, and scrape out every last bit of sauce. Remember, that's not only because I'm cheap and poor and like my food, but it also helps when it goes to washing the dishes. It's not just about being wasteful, you know. <laughs> and then I stir it up and I top it with the bacon and again that's how we like it here but you guys do what you like um, fresh tomatoes fresh vegetables as I told you fresh parsley any of that would enhance this dish um, but this is how we like it here okay so I hope you really enjoyed this tutorial I know it wasn't completely homemade and I wanted to give you guys an option about you know doctoring up some store bought stuff but still making it a little bit of your own if you have any questions, leave them in the comments down below. Hopefully you liked it. Give it a thumbs up. And if you want to share it with friends and family, anybody new who's got um, a lot of mouths to feed in a short period of time. <laughs> and if you haven't yet, click subscribe. And when you do, a little bell will pop up. When you ring that bell, YouTube will let you know whenever I upload a new video. So as always, you take care. God bless. And we'll see you next time.